you got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Hey, what's going on? It's time for another Ask Camp Kennan, and I'm really excited. You know why I'm excited? Because I'm not holding the camera, uh, <laughs> and I'm not pestering uh, Kate. It's actually our good friend and yours, Tom. What's up, Tom? What's up, guys? All right, so there, Tom has the questions. Tom's going to read out the uh, question, and I actually have a bit of an idea of what this question's about. It's about introducing tortoises. Fire away, dude. Okay. Hey, Kennan, just a quick question. You say you have a leopard tortoise two years in solitary. Doesn't he have social problems when he get when he gets introduced to the group? I have a Herman, and in a few years, I want to introduce him to a newly put together group around five or six. Okay. Do you think he will have social problems, Max Van Gemmert? All right, Max. Well, very good. All right, let's talk about this. You know, if you've watched Jurassic World like I have a few hundred times, you know that an animal raised in isolation has no social uh, social structure, and that's not entirely true. Uh, case in point, here's Edgar. So look at Edgar, everybody. Edgar's a radiated tortoise, grew up in the island of Manhattan, far, far away from the original island that he was from. And uh, he was raised up by a professor up there, moved down to Boca Raton, never saw another one of his species for a very, very long time. I had Edgar now over two years, and I had him away from the other group of radiated tortoises, and I did that because I wanted to make sure that Edgar did not have any pathogens, any problems at all, so I, I withheld putting them together until I felt comfortable. Now, when I put Edgar in, there was about a few weeks where Edgar was shy. Uh, you know, there's, there's another eight animals in here. You can see them kind of spread out, and they were a closed group for many, many years. Well, Edgar here, he actually, uh, he once he was done being shy, you can see now he's walking around and behaving just like a tortoise. It's kind of like riding a bicycle, remembering what kind of animal you are, especially with reptiles and more importantly with tortoises. Tortoises by and large are animals that live for the most part, this is not true of all the time, Certainly not amongst some of the basking turtles. They actually live in quite large colonies uh, in a river system. And there are actually some tortoises that live in high densities with other tortoises of the same kind. So with the radiated tortoises though, uh, most of the time, these guys wander around a smaller uh, range. Tortoises don't have a large range. And in that range, it may overlap with another one of its species, be that a male or a female. So what'll happen is it all comes back to them. They know how to start behaving with others of their own kind. I haven't seen any breeding behavior out of Edgar yet, but that's the most important thing is that they're getting along. So when you add the Herman's tortoise to the group, uh, you just want to watch for any kind of uh, bullying from either of the tortoises, either the one you're just um, adding or the established group members. If it gets to the point where the new tortoise starts getting bullied too much, doesn't move around a lot, is hiding all the time, you want to maybe pull them back out and try again in a few weeks. Uh, you want to do these, there's some interaction right there. Look at Edgar, look at this. Here's some interaction right here, guys. So Edgar's only been in here for about three or four months and I love to see this kind of interaction. This is what's exciting to me about having more than one of a species. A few weeks ago, we, we answered another Ask Cannon question about introducing a new tortoise to the group, uh, or whether you should buy one or two tortoises at the time. Now, I made it for the case to buy uh, two and raise them up together. When you do that, number one, from the early age, these animals are uh, among another one of its kind. They grow up at the same rate, makes things easier because what's going to happen is if you got one and you raise it up, you're going to want another. They're awesome. So you're definitely going to want a little buddy for yours. Uh, and what will happen is if you get a new tortoise, it may not be the same size and you'll have to worry about this acclimation process. Remember, tortoises, some species can be combative like the sulcatas, some of your Russian tortoises, animals like that will bump and grind. Uh, other males and, and bully them at times. And it can get pretty hardcore. I have a tortoise shell inside. Zeus, if you've watched my live shows, you've seen me pull out his shell. He was actually killed by a 90 pound uh, sulcata named Lumpy out back. Zeus was 150 pounds. So size doesn't necessarily always mean anything. But Max, I'm hoping I'm answering your question. What I would do is just add them, keep an eye on for any kind of, you know, um, 
uh, bullying behavior or stress from the animal. And you'll know that because the tortoise is going to move around or not move around. But I love what I'm seeing right now. Here comes another tortoise climbing on up. I love to give these guys exercise. I'm going to hang out here and see just what Edgar does. Maybe we'll get some breeding going on. I don't know. I'm just happy that they're nuzzling noses. I have one question. Oh, you do? Well, just, and it's kind of off topic, but All not right. really. It, it takes a lot of patience to keep a tortoise separated for like two years before introducing it to the group. It does. Is that an excessive amount of time? Are no. you overly cautious? Well, or, you know, or you got to be that patient? I'm just curious. No, that's a great question, Tom. And in, in zoos, most of the time, a quarantine can be between six months to a year. Um, and that also depends on the health of the animal when it arrives. So usually if the animal's healthy, there's no outward signs of any kind of uh, pathogen or illness, what will happen is they'll, they'll leave it in quarantine for about six months. The other thing that I need to mention, guys, that adds into this whole discussion is you want to know, you want to make sure you have space, okay? You don't want to just overcrowd the animals because I don't care how well they get along. When you're overcrowding uh, tortoises or any animal, you're going to get aggressive behavior. They're fighting for very limited resources. You'll notice that my enclosures here at the camp uh, often are pretty spacious. It makes finding the eggs a little bit more difficult, but you know what? I'm more concerned about the quality of life for the animals here. As you can see, there's a lot of furniture that they have to exercise on. They gotta get strong. They can move away from each other if they are getting shy. I think that's a key too. So don't overcrowd your animals. Uh, uh, that will definitely aid in when you finally do uh, overcome the patience barrier, as Tom mentioned. Uh, when you do finally introduce them, uh, they will have an easier time acclimating because you know what? When they wanna get away, they can just walk away. It's kinda like, do you want to live in New York City the whole time in a five bedroom or two bedroom apartment with your roommate or a flat? There aren't even two bedroom apartments there. It's just a there. loft. It's just a loft. <laughs> yeah. I haven't been in New York City in a while. But anyway, uh, you want space and so do animals. So give them the space and they'll reward you with some interesting behavior that won't stress them out.